Don't ask me how, but pizza has skyrocketed in price over the last several years, to the point that an 18-inch pizza in Chicago just costed my dad and I $45. We talked about how ridiculous that was all day long. At another pizza joint, a more respectably sized 18 by 26 inch football pizza will still run you $50. Rumors are the skyrocketing price has been caused by the price of cheese increasing. Dough can be made for pennies and while sauce is more expensive than dough, it is still incredibly cheaper when bought in bulk than cheese itself. However, when comparing prices from 13 years ago to today, Cheese has only increased 60 cents per pound. Most pizzas don't even have close to a pound of cheese on them, but somehow, pizza prices have nearly doubled at many pizza places across Chicagoland, specifically in the last five or six years. Let's make a pizza nearly as big as a football pizza that is super simple to make, feeds four to six people, and will cost more than five times less to make. Let's get into it. We will start by pouring ingredients into a food processor and blending them. For that, we will turn on our scale and add 420 grams AP flour, 100 grams vital wheat gluten, 6 grams salt, and 5 grams yeast. Put the top on and blend on high for 30 seconds to get everything combined. For those of you unfamiliar with vital wheat gluten, it adds over 70 grams of protein to this pizza and doesn't affect the taste of the pizza in any way, shape, or form, so it is a welcomed addition to almost all all of my pizza recipes. Once all ingredients are combined, add 15 grams of olive oil over the top of the dry ingredients, put the food processor back into place, and blend on high. While the food processor is blending, slowly pour in 365 grams of water over 20 to 30 seconds and let the machine continue to mix for an additional 30 seconds. Dump the newly formed dough onto the counter as well as any extras that may have been left behind in the food processor. Get the dough off of the blade, bring all the ingredients together, and roll the dough into a ball. My food processor isn't that big and has a more difficult time combining all of the ingredients for a pizza this size because the dough overcrowds the processor. Since this is the case, I like to spend about a minute just rolling the dough back and forth while switching hands to make sure all of the ingredients are completely combined. And in just about five minutes, you have a dough that is ready to go into a lightly oiled bowl and just needs to be covered with cling wrap. While the dough rests for 90 minutes, let's quickly make our sauce. For that, you just need one high-sided container to store the sauce in and your ingredients. Pour half of a can of Cento San Marzano tomatoes into the container. You will see why we only poured half in soon, but I would like the focus to shift to having a good quality tomato. I am okay spending a little extra money for a good sauce because the difference in quality is evident and I am trying to get this to taste as close to a real restaurant quality pizza as I can in the home kitchen. If you are interested in learning more, you should watch Ethan's video on if the quality of tomatoes actually matters. Anything I use in this video will be in the description below. Following the tomatoes, let's add 66 grams of Cento tomato paste, 7 grams fresh garlic, 2.3 grams onion powder, 1 gram oregano, 1 gram crushed red pepper, and 8 grams olive oil. I use Cento tomato paste because of the quality, but if you prefer another tomato paste, feel free to sub it in here. Using an immersion blender, mix the ingredients until you have your desired consistency, add the remaining canned tomatoes, and mix again. If you prefer a chunkier sauce, I recommend breaking the tomatoes up with your hands and mixing the sauce using a whisk instead of an immersion blender. This will give you complete control over the consistency of the final sauce. Add in some salt and swerve to your preference, which for me is 6 grams of salt and 10 grams of swerve. Mix, put your top on it, and date it. We now have the second component of this recipe that was again made in just 5 minutes that has zero cleanup and was made in the container it will be stored in. Get it in the fridge until it is pizza time. And like this video if you are finding value in it. The last thing we need to do is shred some mozzarella cheese. For that, I have a 2 pound brick of part skim low moisture mozzarella and I'll take about 10 minutes to shred the entire block down and put it into court bags. This freshly shredded cheese will be good for about 1 week and can be used on other pizza recipes or pretty much any recipe because cheese is great on anything. 90 minutes has passed and as you could see our dough has risen significantly. It is time to start getting our pizza together so grab a sheet pan and add 5 grams of oil to it. Using your hands spread the oil onto both the bottom and sides of the pan so that the pizza doesn't stick and gets a nice crispy crust on the bottom once cooked. Degas the dough, grab it out of the bowl, and let it hang for a couple seconds. This will start the 
process of stretching the dough out in a rectangle by just using gravity. Put it down in the middle of the pan and using the tips of your fingers, push the dough out towards the edges of the pan. Using your fingertips will help keep air in the dough, making for a fluffier and chewier final product. Once the dough starts snapping back like this, I like to let it sit so the gluten can relax. I will cover it with another sheet pan and give it 10 to 15 minutes. 15 minutes later, the dough is ready to be shaped and I will finish off stretching the dough into the corners and the side of the pan. I usually like the dough to start coming up the sides a little bit because as it cooks, it will shrink. Once fully stretched, we want to give this dough one last rise. Cover with a sheet pan and let the dough rise for 20 to 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, our dough has risen a considerable amount and it is time to top it. Let's start by adding 300 grams of sauce and spreading evenly over the pizza. I personally like to have a crust, so I will leave about an inch around the entire pizza untouched. Then add 532 grams of our freshly shredded mozzarella over the top of the pizza. Not everyone likes the same toppings, so to be safe, we will keep half of the pizza just cheese and load the other half with pepperoni. Add 71 grams of turkey pepperoni to the other half of the sheet pan and throw it in a preheated 425 degree oven for 16 to 20 minutes or until it has browned to your preference. If your oven is hotter in the back than the front, like mine, I would also suggest flipping it halfway through for more even cooking. Once finished, remove the pan from the oven and check the bottom of it. If it isn't browned enough to your liking, you can put it across two burners on medium low heat for two to four minutes or until it's how you want it, unless you have an induction oven like I do, which makes it increasingly more difficult to do with a sheet pan. To really embrace the pizza restaurant theme, we will cut this pizza every three inches or so. This will give us the classic pizza squares you will get at any pizza parlor across Chicagoland. Call your family and friends to the kitchen and it is time to enjoy. For minimal work and less than $9 per pizza, you and your family can eat and you will probably have some leftovers for tomorrow. While this style of pizza is served and enjoyed by millions across Chicagoland, many people visiting are looking for a deep dish pizza. Luckily, I have one for you that is just as easy to make and actually helped me lose 20 pounds. Not to mention, it is absolutely delicious. Check it out here and until next time, deuces.